Hi, this is Simon Obstel and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And today we're going to be taking a look at this shattered reflection effect. Now, the trick to having interesting reflections is to use a surface that's broken up and has some bits that are highly reflective and others that are scarcely reflective at all, or indeed completely non-reflective. And that's what we're doing here. And it's quite a dramatic look, I think. So let's see how it's done. So first of all, let's check on our project settings, 1920, 1080, 24 frames a second. I'm going with a duration of 20 seconds. So the first thing I'm going to do is bring in a couple of assets that I will give you a link to. So subfloor and floor, import those. So the floor element wants to be above the subfloor. So let me just turn off the floor so you can see what the subfloor is, just a basic sort of texture like that. Let me just, just turn on the floor itself. And if I look at the alpha channel, you see I've got cutouts in this. Now this is an image that I grabbed from pexels.com, nice texture. And then I sort of cut out bits to create these sort of shattered fragments. So I'm going to select both of these layers and I'm going to come to properties and I want to set their scale to 100%. Let's open up the rotation and we're going to set that X rotation to negative 90. And then we're going to set the Y position to negative 250. So I've renamed that group as floor and I just want to set up the group structure for the rest of the project. So I'm going to make another new group and I'm going to duplicate that group. And into the first group, I'm going to add another new group. So make a new group, put it into that first group there. So I've called my top group reflection and I've called the one below it object. And in that object group, there is a group called object subgroup. So into this object subgroup, I'm going to bring some text. Now you can type your own text, it can be whatever you want it to be. And I'm just going to adjust its pos vertical positions. Let's go for something like that for 500 is probably good for that. I'm also going to create a shape around it just, just to show you that you can use this effect with any shapes or any images you want. So let's grab the rectangle tool. Let's draw a box around shattered, zero it out on X. Uh, we just need to switch fill off and the outline on. Maybe make that outline a little bit fatter. And then let's make a clone of that rectangle. Right click, make clone layer. And let's just move it down till it's sitting over reflection. And let's maybe just grab all of those. So the two boxes and the text and just move them up a little bit more. I think probably something like that. So next I want to give this a little bit of a glow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this object subgroup and I'm going to right click make clone layer. And I'm going to move that down below the subgroup. Bearing in mind we're, we're still in this object group here. So if I close that down you can see we've got our object subgroup there and we've got our clone below it. So let's take this clone, let's come to filters and blur and Gaussian blur. What we want to do is have four instances of this Gaussian blur. So I'm going to duplicate it three times. I'm actually going to use the command D shortcut like that. The first one I'm going to set to 32, the amount that is to say. The second one, the amount to 128. The third one to 512 and the last one to 2048. And then we're just gonna knock this back. So the first glow mix is gonna stay at 100%, but the second one is going to come down to 40, and the other two are going to come down to a mix value of 20. And if I turn that on and off, you can see that glow is, is fairly effective. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to take my object subgroup of which this is the clone is a clone. And I'm going to come to filters and masks and keying and matte magic. And I'm just going to do a little bit of a tweak to the shrink and the erode. And what this does is it gives us a little bit more of a kind of a glowing effect or a sort of a, a light effect. If I turn that on and off, you can see how that works. 
it's a little bit less less defined and that's quite a nice technique and then we're going to add color and levels and what we're going to do with this levels is just give it a little bit of coloration so first of all i'm going to take the red and bring this value way down and then i'm going to come to the green and bring that down just a little bit like that and i'm also going to add another levels on top of this so color levels and in this case, I'm just going to brighten everything up a little bit again, just using that white control there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to close up the object group and then we're going to make a clone of it, which is going to be our reflection. So right click and make clone layer. And we're going to drag that clone into the reflection group that we've made. And then we can rotate this through 180 degrees on X. And then we're just going to bring it down to somewhere around here. So and that's sort of roughly 230 or something. One of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to add a light, so object light, a switch to 3D. Now the thing is, I don't want either my reflection or my main object to be illuminated by the light. I want them to be light sources in their own right. So I'm going to select this object group and I'm going to come into the lighting and turn that off. And I'm going to do the same for that reflection group. So turn that off. And so now the light is only affecting the floor. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a camera quickly so we can get a better sense of how this is actually working. I'm going to set the angle of view to 90. So something really dramatic and then properties and just, just rotate it around a little bit like this. And we can just pull out a little bit on Z and move it across like that. This is just I'm roughly setting this up just so we can see the effect. So we need to make this reflection look as though it's being reflected only in that those shiny shards on the floor. So to do that, we're going to take this reflection group and we're going to add an image mask to it. So right click, add image mask. And for the source, we're going to use that floor texture, not the floor group, but the floor texture. So drag that into the mask source and switch to luminance. And also remember that you need to turn the floor texture back on again. So now we have something that is looking pretty good, I think. I'm just going to turn off some of these overlays. There you go. Now, if I zoom in a bit, you'll see that we've got all these nasty jaggies on the edge of the texture. And that's because we need to switch the render quality to best. And you can see that goes away. So we can take this image mask and we can add to it a color levels. And that means we can just adjust the effect of the tiles. So we can increase the, the effect of the texture by adjusting the black there. You can see that we're getting more of the texture of the tiles. And if we want to increase the intensity of the bright reflection, we can adjust the white like that. So we can do all of that to taste. So then let's set up our camera move. First of all, I want to set up the camera's base position. So I'm going to give it negative 1350 on X, negative uh, 100 on Y, negative 500 on Z and zero rotation. Then I'm going to come to behaviors, basic motion throw, and also camera sweep. So let's do the sweep. First of all, negative 15 for the start and 30 for the end is good. Let's switch the throw to rem to final value. Open up the throw distance. Let's have 20, 75 for X. Let's have negative 50 for Y and 1150 for Z. So then we're getting this nice tracking across and a little bit of a swivel around on Y. And we're seeing all those nice reflections. So the only other thing that I want to do is I want to come to this image mask and I want to adjust its offset. So I'm going to go for negative eight on Y. And I don't know whether you can see, but it's kind of created this effect. There's kind of depth to these glass fragments. If I undo that. You can see they're a little bit flat, but if I go with negative eight for the mask, 
especially look down here if I turn that on and off you'll see we get more of a sense of of that kind of shiny shiny depth and I think that's just a nice little very small detail yeah you can see it here I think so let's just turn that on and off just a very small amount of extra visual interest that I think makes the scene and the one other thing that's important to do is to add a background because if you look at the alpha channel you'll see that we've actually got nothing behind us in the sort of sky area here so we need to add in a color solid to fill that in so let's come over to the library generators and color solid drag that in behind everything else we're going to make this group 2d like that because it's just going to be a sort of solid black the back actually it doesn't have to be entirely black it could be very slightly blue probably would be quite nice like that but, um, it doesn't need to be affected by the lights or the camera or anything but it just as you see if you look at the alpha channel we've now got a solid alpha channel and that's always a sensible thing so thanks very much indeed for watching hope that's been interesting see you again soon